Ramona, I have one also. My mom was in critical and they did two things so they should be three minutes. They did a normal drive. Then you get back and read their paper. So I'm Chris Gus for that. I just got a little song. I hope some of these lines, you know, people might be thinking about the question of the art. It goes like this. All I do is in Jesus. Pray God that I guess Questions? It does say on your new contact and where the locations are. 
21 to right to the left. But to remind you, there is a bulletin now in the back, a bulletin board, um, about the academy functions going on. And we're asking people to write your calendars for April 26th. That is the Sunday Supper and Auction is the And we are taking donations of items that auction off. And the silent auction for all of this proceeds goes to support the academy. So we'd like to do this as well. And it's on the 26th, and from 5 to 6 30 is the summer of the auction, silent auction. After that, it's awesome. So, what is the auction? All right. Uh, those who are able, let's see. And we do have our mark card. Those are some people who are participating. That's wonderful. Um, I'm seeing all my folk chorus again, and if you still have offering you want to contribute, this goes to the camp fund. So I believe this goes for the summer camps for the kids. So we are supporting as many as we can. The buckets are here in the front. Okay. <laughs> oh, my hope is in Jesus.
Yet considered to be punished by God, stricken by him, and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him. I guess that's your job to find your thoughts for her to share with you this morning. And uh, be gracious and send me us. So, uh, last night, as we were driving home, I want to talk about being for this morning. She says, Now, are you going to surprise me? No. I'm supposed to answer that. If I say no, I'm lying. If I say yes, it's not a surprise. So I just said, I don't know, should I? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's what I thought. So a few weeks ago, we were living our life and we were playing things and doing things and just going along and just, you know, how life is. And uh, something came up that caused us to pause and to think about where we're going. And so, then Robin here. Signs. <laughs> the sign says, adventure starts where the plan ends. And our plans have changed a little bit in the last few weeks as uh, we found out that she has cancer. And we're going to be having, uh, Ruth is going to be having surgery on Tuesday. This morning we've heard two testimonies of God's miraculous healing. And so we're looking forward to that. Ruth's attitude has been amazing. She has, she has not wavered in her faith. She hasn't, I don't even think she's scared. I don't know what to do about that. But she has, uh, has just been a trooper in uh, going through this. This morning as I got a couple things to share. This morning as I was, uh, uh, reading the verse for the day and reading some commentary, I ran across this. Isaiah is going to be quite prominent today. We've already read from Isaiah over 20 years but a commentary on, on this was a triumph of God over Israel's enemy, a servant. Filled with joy and expectation, God's covenant people leave behind a strange country and begin the long, dangerous journey back to the promised land. But instead of fear and trepidation, potential perils ahead, they are overwhelmed with a sense of peace and joy. And instead of holding dangers from that return, the land and creation itself join in the celebration to welcome the exiles home. There's no need to worry about long, hard climbs or treacherous descents, for the mountains and the hills cheer them up. There's no need to fret about the shade from the sun's blazing heat. For majestic trees grow up and cast their long, cool shadows across the deserts they are playing. The prophet's vision of the journey home is nearly complete. And in Isaiah 55, 8 and 9 say this, My intentions are not always yours, and I do not go about things as you do. My thoughts and my ways are above and beyond you, just as heaven as far from your reach here on earth. So we're looking forward to what God's doing. And I, I offered you a thing. <laughs> well, I had been thinking that I wanted to say something here. I know a lot of people, some people know the situation. I haven't known how to express it, but I felt like I wanted to say something. And as for prayer, sir, I'm sorry. Um, I just wanted a couple of things. I've, I've been writing things down, I've been journaling. It's amazing how God has ministered um, to me uh, since getting this effect on uh, the day that we saw the cancer doctor. A friend of mine, ours, sends a devotional to me every day. And some days I can't find my read it. Some days I plan to it. And some days I don't read it at all. This is what he's, what our friend Greg sent me on 
February 12th, when we saw the back of this. So Romans 8, 28. And we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. What is the meaning of all things? Even though not everything that happens in our life is good, God delights in working for our good in everything. God at times permits tragedies. He permits the ground to grow dry and stalks to grow bare. He allows Satan to unleash mayhem. Focusing on that. Focusing more on this. But he doesn't allow Satan to triumph. Isn't this the promise of Romans 8, 28? Those things that while themselves are adverse, are turned to good by the sovereign God. God has sovereign control over all events. Through one love technology. Um, his sovereign control over all events through one happening. The sovereign control over all events. Though one happening may seem very bad, in hindsight it turns out to be good. As children of God, we commonly experience both good and bad. Part of the life of faith is accepting prosperity and adversity from God's hand without being able to explain just how everything will be worked out for the future. Isaiah 55 8. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are my thoughts, your ways, my ways, declares the Lord. But know this. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. Pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. Walk through the fire, you will not be burned. The flames will not set you away. Anyway, so I have just had just one thing after another confirming that God is with me. God loves me. God has a plan. It's uh, so one simple thing, I jumped in the car, this was February 5th, jumped in the car February 6th to go to school, and the song that came on was Tasha Lake and said, it's going to be okay, 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 one of those songs that goes on and on, and then it said, I'm going to be okay, I'm going to be okay, all the way to school. So I wanted to tell you about my humorous thing because I truly believe God has a sense of humor too. So in December, my daughter cut my hair and she kind of cut it a little too short. We were trying to get rid of the frizz from a perm. She cut it a little short and I was fighting with her all December, all January, and I thought, you know, I had long hair for 30 years and I cut it when I turned 60. I think I'm going to grow my hair out. So I thought, I'm going to grow my hair out. Then I got the cancer diagnosis, and I'm like, oh, you're so funny. I was going to grow my hair out. But who knows? I, you know, I'm not worried. I'm not afraid. I'll buy a few half, whatever. Anyway, I went into all these, and I got this growing my hair on my mind. You know? And I see this lady, and she's got her hair twisted up, and it looks so cute. You're just going to go tell her it looks cute. And I still going to tell her it looks cute. Nice, 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 nice. So I walked up to her and I said, I just wanted to tell you that I love your hair. It looks really nice. And she said, thank you. And I said, you want to hear something funny? I just, I had long hair for 30 years and I'm cut up with 16 and I decided I really want to grow my hair back out. I said, but I just got a cancer diagnosis. And so I'll probably lose it. She said, no, not necessarily. I just got done with cancer and chemo myself and I didn't lose my hair. But please straight to call these. So the next night, I come to the spaghetti supper, and I um, sat with Danny, we sat with Danny Kay, and the other couple came and sat down, and she had cute hair wrapped up, really cute. And after we were done eating, I sat down beside her, and I said, I just wanted to like her. So cute. She said, oh, thank you. And I said, so funny. I just got a diagnosis of this, and I was going to grow my hair off. And then we just kept chatting. And one of the complications that I have with surgery is that I've had so many abdominal surgeries that I have scar tissue. They're not sure they can do it laparoscopic. So I have to have a second surgeon. So I, I told her that. She said, oh, no. I just had a friend that had it laparoscopic, and she had all kinds of scar tissue. So don't worry about that. It'll probably be. I'm just so amazed and just over and over how God just reassures me that 
Satan can cause mayhem, but God triumphs. Amen. So another sign that God. <laughs> is this one. Embrace the detours. So I'm going to set this up. Here. Uh, yeah. What's that? Oh, we, we can. I got one, one more thing. I have a poem for you. I have a poem for you that goes like this. I was sitting there minding my business and letting my mind go slack when a nurse came in with a bright sunny smile and a gown with a slip out of the Take a shower, she said, get ready and jump into the set. What she's really talking about was the gown with the slip down the back. They're coming to do some tests, she said. They're going to stretch you out on a rack. With nothing twixt me in the cold, cruel world but a gown split on the bed. It comes to the knees from the front and the sides. For those areas, there is no slack. But by far the greatest shortcoming is that movement split on the back. Whoever designed this garment for humor had no man. But I failed to see anything funny about a gown that split on the back. I hear them coming. To get me with wheels going clickety clack, I'll ride through the halls on the table, got slipped on the back. When I get to heaven, it'll make me no difference if my robe is white, red, or black. The only thing I ask is please give me one I'll split. <laughs> okay, we're as definitely. Yes. Anybody that needs anointing, let's do it. Let's do it. Thank you. It's just God. God and Al. I remind you, the Lord says to come. That's the Ruth's purpose of today. Right now, it's cancer. That might not be the burden, but you carry the burden. And the Lord will rest in peace. Jesus says, He didn't say he read it, he didn't say he said, all smart. I don't think you can rest. What the James tells us. Together, you the Bible is a symbol. It's faith. It says that the prayer of faith will heal sin. <coughs> you believe and give confidence to the Lord. He says that He's your Savior. It's coming. It's coming. What else? What do you want to throw your prayer for? That's <laughs> good. Or for, I call it a Or, can't hear me. Go ahead. We don't believe that our prayer has any particular power. We believe that the power comes from the power of His name. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. Righteous run in and they're safe. Call in the name of our Savior. Blood cleanses from every sin who was wounded for our transgression. Our name. By His stripes we are healed. How do we come before you today? Those words are so scary about cancer. We don't know how to deal with it. Lord, we know to call in the name of the Lord our God. God comes near. 
So we call it unique. Walk down this, this road before, before this burden. Lord, we promise um, to be with us in everything. Lord, we pray today, we pray in faith in submitting to your will. Would you put your hand on our sister? That's your body and spirit. Lord, if it is your will, we pray that the answer would be gone. This would be one of the signs and miracles of following your people. <laughs> We pray according to your will, Lord, if it is your plan to be glory. Good is our path for our sister. Lord, we do pray that you would anoint her in strength and not strength, strength and power. Lord, we end by praying boldly here. Speak the word. And speak the word and unloose. Pray with you and unloose the health and the fullness. Have for us, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. We know who you are. You're the one that saves the captain. You're the one that saves and heals. Ask you for Amen. Amen. Jesus Christ. Sister in the Lord, Sister in the family. We pray that your hand will hold you first and touch your hand. No affection, depression, coming to her body. Lord, I say, she doesn't want to go out and We pray in Jesus' name. We pray in faith. We know that you are able. We don't doubt your, your power, Lord, and we know the Lord is willing to will it. Touch her now, we pray in Jesus' name. Stop the infection. End it right now. And I pray, even as we ask, put nature, every hold in every, every part of her skin where that infection is dead. On her face, in her mouth, and her throat. You may go away. But you would give it and stop it. Lord, give her in those places in my life. In the holy name, strong name, passes ever named. Amen. We pray for Rick. Pray for his incurable blood disease, but Lord says that the prayer of faith is sick. And we sin to you. But we explain that to you. I don't know. I'm so with Jesus said. Jesus, we pray for you. We pray for you. We pray for Rick. We pray in faith. The doctor says that he's be monitored and can't be cured. But oh, Jesus, you are able. You are able to put right what is wrong in his body and in his mind and in his spirit and in his soul. Your beautiful work, the work of the enemy, and make it right, Lord. Put faith in his heart towards you, in the work of Satan, in the lives of the enemy, Lord, the brokenness. We ask in Jesus' name, the name of our Savior, our deliverer. We, we know that these prayers aren't just going 
through the sound system and rambling around the church. Lord, you bear them from the We pray along with you and according to your will in Jesus' name. We pray for every day. Just touch him right now. In Jesus' name. Amen. Anybody else? The Lord is near me. The Lord is near me. Here, here it's time to reach out to faith. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we come before you. Come before you in the name of Christ. Praise the name of the Lord. Lord, Lord, Jesus. Feels like the enemy flooded in space and but it's still like an all full on onslaught We pray in the holy name. Pray for your spirit, Lord. I pray for first of all, she can pray. Give the everlasting arms. Give the, the arms of love strength. Lord, that, that the peace that doesn't make sense passes all of No one Lord. But Lord, we pray for the pain in your neck and back. This Lord, God has worked in the care of one touch for me, one word. We pray that you would speak the word in your hand. Uh, she would feel your touch, your body, and your Lord is by us. And we pray that she would be touch her and be right. What think might be wrong with you? No. Trust me on it. Is that her? Father, right, Lord, and comfort the soul of your spirit. Oh, God, we pray you this. Children, and some of them learn more. Lord, see the hand of God. Know that you are, you are with your people. Lord, they will long to ask you to see. Because um, we need honest people in our positions in government. We just had the primary on Tuesday, and um, I firmly believe that Satan is causing mayhem in our country. And I also believe that it's not a battle of politics, so to speak. It's a battle of good. And I just want to pray. I'll pray for our country and I just pray that each one of us can be firm in our faith and uh, stand up for what's right and what's wrong and stand up for truth because Jesus said, I am in the way. And there's a lot of uh, in the world today, um, they don't even believe in an absolute, and that Jesus said, I am. So, I, I will just pray. Lord, we just come before you and know that scripture says that we humble ourselves, seek your face, and confess our sins. Lord, we have been lax, we have been uh, um, unfaithful, uh, we have not stood firm on you. As our, as our cornerstone and as our foundation to life. And we need to, we need to be in scriptures. We need to be in prayer. We need to be in community with believers. We need to be in church. We need to be serving you. And Lord, help us to be faithful. Let's pray for our country right now. 
the turmoil that is here and the good versus evil, which is uh, you. Are, you are the creator of this universe, and you are on the throne that Satan is rolling around to destroy, to seek to destroy. And the people are being blinded uh, by Satan and his lies and deceit. And Lord, we just ask that each one of us would just be firm and faithful in our love for you, in serving you, in speaking the truth, giving an answer to the hope that lies within us, and to walk in your ways every single day. Day. We just offer this up to you to see healing when you see revival in our nation. But we want to be comfy. When you're out the ball this week and you run across that Christian that says, I don't need to go to church, I don't need to go to church. Tell them about today. You need them, they need us. You don't experience the uh, setting of the classroom video. So, we're going to switch gears here now and we need to start preparing our hearts for what's going to happen. We read from Isaiah 53. Of four or five trees. Just to get the idea of what our Savior for us. Surely he took up our infirmities and carried our sorrows, yet we considered him stricken by God, smitten by him, afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions, he was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him, and by his wounds we are healed. We all, like sheep, have gone astray. Each of us has turned to his own way, and the Lord has laid upon him, Jesus, the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth. He was led like a lamb to slaughter, and as the sheep before her shears was silent, so he did not open his mouth. I'm going to give you just a minute to quietly reflect in your heart, confess anything you confess, and just align yourself with Jesus right now, and, and just prepare yourself. I'll give you a couple minutes. Father, what your son went through on our behalf is, is really sad. But there's another whole side to it. There's a side of rejoicing. Because that work of the cross made it possible for us to be sons and daughters. How can we thank you and love? How can we, how can we praise and worship you and love for doing that for us? Father, may this act of communion that we're about to partake in remind us once again of where we came from and where we're going in our walk. We came from sin, headed for heaven. And it's because of the work of Jesus Christ on the cross, his death, burial, and resurrection, and us putting our faith and trust in that act of having happened. And we thank you and praise you, Jesus. Amen. Pastor, Pastor Ruth and Alan are sure you can read you this morning. We're going to try to learn a song. This is, it's a 
song that was written for communion. He just said, when you do this, the Lamb of God said, when you do this, here's my body, blood, and the symbol. Do this. Remember me. For we gather as people to repent. In your word and in your table, we repent. Though the world forgets your glory, you remind us what is true. As we pray and sing your story, we remember. We as you told us to, we remember In the wonder of creation, we remember In our failures and temptation, we remember In the stories of redemption, how you make it all things new. As not all for your restoration, we remember you. We remember you. We remember you. As you told us to, we remember you. In our thoughts and words, please, Lord, we remember how we treat the least of these, Lord, we remember. Let us now become disheartened, for the burdens are with you, and one day they'll be forgotten. We'll remember you. We remember. We remember. As you told us to. Thank you, Pastor John. Thanks for being willing to try these songs. I don't even have the choice to make this Someday we'll sing another new song together. In glory. We're looking back across the day and we're looking ahead and we say, Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for shedding your blood and making yourself for it. And Lord, we pray together to cause pray. We say, Our Father, pardon me, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on the earth as it is. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us our trespasses. We forgive those who trespass us. We must not be a patient that will deliver us to you. Find us from our glory. Amen. How about we see it one more time? Same cornerstone.
It's funny, you know, the noon hour, I remember when I was a kid, got service reports. No preaching, but I got to tell you, I'm so excited to share with you. Oh, God is going to be sharing with you. Right. Scott? I said, God. That's this funny, verses 8 through 11. The Lord says, Remember the Sabbath day, Nicole. Six days you shall labor, do all your work. Seventh is the Sabbath of the Lord your God. On it you shall not do any work, either you nor your sons nor your daughters, nor your male or female servant, nor your animals, nor any foreigner residing in the town. Six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, 
and the sea, and all that is in them, rest of themselves. Therefore, the Lord blessed the seventh day, made it holy. Now, God marked his people in a special way by commanding them something to help you today. Um, why? So you think that Sunday afternoon nap, right? Well, Sunday afternoon nap is really good. Thank you. If you get one, thank Jesus for it, by the way. <laughs> but really, I'm going to tell you why we thank Jesus for it and not just the Ten Commandments. Now, the Lord did command the Two Commandments to rest on, on that seventh day. I'm going to tell you that you don't rest on the seventh day a week. So we're in the first day of the week. I also tell you that your rest is not found in your day. Because if you're waiting for that seventh day to come around, how many of you got to that seventh day and found out, oh no, it's all wrong. So much for my day off. I want to present to you this morning the Lord Jesus Christ who gives you rest in your soul and your body and your mind, in spite of what happens in the day. Okay, yes, we call this the Lord's day because the day he came out of the grave. But in some ways, that is a, a misnomer because he is the Lord of every day, of every day. That doesn't mean I'm going to put on the Lord today. It just means I want you to know that the Lord didn't take the week off and say, this is my day. He is with you at every moment. And you are his servant and his child at every moment. He will not leave you or abandon you or get tired of you at every moment. I guess this is personal for you because I've heard preachers when I grow up say, you've got six days to yourself, but the seventh is for the Lord. And I'm saying, no, no, I need Jesus every day of the week. It's not for me. I'm not working for myself. If I'm working for myself, I wasted most of my week. But he's Lord of every day. And in every day, no matter how hard or trying, challenging my mind, my body, or my spirit, I find rest in the risen Lord. Not just waiting for a correct day to show up so I know. Ah, my God. Amen. God gives his people rest. And that rest is not just about the day. It's actually all night long, dude. All night long, all night long. Remember that old song saying, I don't know, heard it on the radio or saying, all night, all day, he was watching. Because uh, you were on his hands, you were on his mind. He is with you. He didn't just send angels to watch you. He's with you. He didn't just send you out in the past and hope you show up back on time. He's with you. <laughs> and he's Lord of. Your mind and your body and your spirit on, on Monday when the alarm goes off, before the alarm goes off. Let me tell you about these people who received this message from God. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy and all these other commandments. They received the fourth commandment directly from God, but they refused to trust Him. They refused to trust Him. You read the story. In the, in the book of Exodus, in the book of Numbers. And you're going to find out that just wouldn't trust God because it's why they had to, they had to be pushed and prodded the whole time. When they got to a point where God was going to give them everything he promised, they didn't trust him. They treated him like they treated Pharaoh, like an evil taskmaster. Somebody you fear and hide from, but not somebody you trust. But the only thing you can trust from an evil taskmaster is that he's going to be evil. He's going to treat you badly. This is what sin has done to us. He's, the, the enemy has treated us badly. He's been that evil taskmaster. He told us you can have you can have all this fun and all this good stuff. You just have, had your own way, and we woke up one day and found out our own way it just about killed us, and we were slaves to, to something else. We couldn't, we couldn't manage life anymore because life had overwhelmed us. Actually, it wasn't life, it was death. It overwhelmed us. All the dead stuff in the world, and we were saying, God help me! God shows up. God does show up when we call to Him. 
He doesn't send us a bill and say, well, you get paid, and I'll show up. No, that's what Jesus does. He paid it all. That's you know that word that says the cross? It's finished. If you go and look at the Greek, it translates to paid in full. God had God had to send that all right now. All of it didn't miss a thought or evil intention. Jesus pays the debt and he stamps over your sin debt with his blood. Paid in full. Talk about rest. That's not just on the seventh day where the Lord said that's every day. Every day. The maturity of my people pastors. The people he had chosen, he had rescued, rebelled against him. He said, no, we're not doing it. We're not having it anymore. By the time Moses comes down from the mountains, they've already built a idol in their they're having a party. Now, I'm not saying they need to take and have a and, and a close of the time show up with a play with no, they're, they're partying in, in the worst sense of the word. They make college frat parties with pain. That's what they were doing. God had delivered them. And they went back and acted like the gods of Egypt that did foul, filthy things. The, the scripture says they rose up to play. They weren't shooting full of the baskets. They didn't know this. These people are playing constantly. None of this you would get from the suburbs. You kill them. Like, there's a room for a body to eat them. Oh, you laugh. Oh, you laugh. But you know what? I've had that bad attitude sometimes. Friend of mine, the only one. Sometimes it hurts. Sometimes I just whine. God have mercy on on my whining and complaining spirit. Oh God, root it out. I get so busy listening to my whining and complaining spirit, but I refuse to listen to God because I'm only in my own dramatic moment with my whining and complaining spirit. That's not to say there's not real pain, there is real pain. But we get used to the whining, don't we? You don't know what I've been through, but I don't. But I'd rather talk about the one who saves, who delivers, and who heals, because we've all been through something. We all have a story to tell. That bad story is not good. But if you know Jesus today, you have peace in your soul over the past because he's taken down the past and made you a new woman or a new man. This isn't going to be nice. I'm going to say it. Stop whining about the past. Jesus did it. And he restores what the enemy has taken. They're free to take a plan. They refuse to take the territory God promised them right there. Edge of God's promised land. And they're too stubborn. They're too scared. They're too self centered. They're too proud. And they're still living like slaves. Man, that's scary. What are we going to do? So, there were two men that came back from that, that spy out trip. They'd gone to spy out the land. Ten said, <laughs> Guys, big, ugly, scary. The two said, so what? They're right, guys. See those great people brought back. This is the land God is giving us. God was with us. When we couldn't get across the Red Sea, God was with us. When we didn't have anything to eat, God was with us. When we didn't have anything to drink, and He's promised, so let's trust Him. And the ten overruled the two. The two of them, anybody remember those names? Joshua and Caleb. Remember these guys. They're the only ones of your generation that survived because the rest of these, because, it's, because God was so angry with them, he said, you're not going into my promised land. I forbid you to go. And then they said, oh, we'll go. We'll go by ourselves. They didn't go. None of them. They all died. They spent 40 years walking circles in the desert. 
Apparently, it's easy to go off to the desert, so it's only what you got hard to do. But it can take it any more aimless and empty than following your own dead trail in sand. And the nice thing about going to the beach is when you start to sand, you can leave. You just walk away. If I gave them a place they wouldn't leave the desert, they would come you know, behind you. The two people from that generation are now Joshua. By the way, he led people into the land. And oh, also, by the way, his name in Hebrew is Yeshua. In Greek, it's someone familiar with is Jesus. He's the one, he's God's salvation. Caleb was the man who was 84 years old with Joshua and said, Okay, remember that piece of land I picked out 40 years ago? I want it. I haven't forgotten. I'm not, any, I'm not younger, but I'm not tired. I'm not old. I want it. I know there's giants in it, but I want it. I know it's mountain, but I want it. Right. So while these people are dying, God raised Joshua takes in. And Jesus takes in. See, God does a new thing. It's not about taking that day off and saying, okay. So we got we, we got to get the Sabbath thing, right? So we're gonna make a bunch of rules so nobody breaks the Sabbath. So what kind of rules should we have so nobody breaks the Sabbath? Somebody says you can't take more than so many steps on the Sabbath. Oh, you've broken the rule not to work in the Sabbath. Well, break that down. Somebody else says, well, spitting can be hard work. If you spit hard enough, I'm not making these rules up. Pharisees make them up. These are real rules. Yeah, spit hard enough so that the dust moves. You dig a fur on dust, that's work. Or you can't cook on the Sabbath. You can't carry things in the Sabbath. So Jesus shows up and does a new thing. He meets a man who's laying by the pool of the dust and waiting for someone to. To get him into the water, and he can't get in the water, and Jesus asked him this question. This is, it sounds dumb, but it's a really great question. Do you want to be whole? It's been here 38 years. Every time the water's trouble, I drive back. Oh, it's sweet. Yeah, but you want to be whole. And so, oh, it's the Sabbath. Jesus said, look, this day, look at that. Walk. You know, strangely enough, that man who played it for 38 years in the same. Did it? Before Christmas. And they might not let you go to the synagogue. You can't go to the synagogue now because you're late. You can't go to the temple now. No, he just grabbed his mat and walked away. He walked away from the criticizers. He walked away from the bondage. He walked away from the anger. He walked away from the rebuke. He walked into the freedom that Jesus had given him. The wholeness and rest from his body. He did something he had not ever done. Or it been 40 years. He walked away. Somebody started an argument with that guy. He couldn't walk away. Somebody picked on him. He couldn't walk away. Today he can walk away. He can go home. Jesus breaks chains that we build around laws. He says, I'm not going to make you live according to laws, but to the rule of my presence in your heart. We're not going to point at laws and say, oh, you broke that when we're going to get to talk about what I'm doing. I didn't know, right? He says, I'm going to live in your heart. I'm going to write my law in your heart so it's inside out. You want me? Can I say, honor me? It will be anything. Anything. That's the way it's going to be. Somebody's not going to walk around with a law book in particular. Um, little faster on the Sabbath. I'm going to give you real rest. I'm going to give you a new spirit. Give you a new life. Jesus can do this. He's the rest giver. Remember we called him Lord of Hosts, Lord of Salo? He's the rest giver. He's the rest giver because he's the Lamb of God. He's a rescuer because he's a sin bearer. He's the scapegoat. He takes our sin. He takes the guilt and the sin on himself. He takes it to a place that never comes back. He can give us rescue because he's a conqueror of death, hell, and the grave. 
so you and I can rest. But it's not just because Jesus did this. Because we take what Jesus did and said, to me, he does it to me. You know, Jesus performed God's will without a mistake, flawlessly, flawlessly, perfectly, no, all that things, probably kind of score a little higher. No, he did all of it perfectly. You know that everything that Jesus is and is done, he shares with his people, who are his people? There's those people that he called out of slavery in Egypt. And there's people here this morning that he's called out of sin in the world and bondage. One of the things that means is you need to quit trying so hard to be perfect and trust Jesus because he is something that you're trying to do. And he doesn't have to try, it's his nature. Hold on, Jesus, don't cheat me. I'm going to get right in the middle. No, I don't ever work. But he, <laughs> he shares with us, and when he lives in us, he performs God's will in us. This is the only way anybody can say that God's still will be perfect, because he lives in us. I'm, I'm not perfect since I'm flawless. But I have perfect children. But I'm flawless, but they're perfect. I'll give you all a list of what I've changed about. Then we got that one more. Also, kind of music grew up. Is it of the spirit of being? <laughs> Generally. You think God says, somebody criticizes it. He says, in mind, we want to say about it. Mind. I'm telling you that this morning, my friend, because you and I need to rest in the will and favor of God. We can try so hard to do so many things, and really we just need to get close to God and hear Him say, This is my beloved, my son, my daughter, and so pleased with them. My son lives in them, and he's performing God's will in them. Yielding is resting in a the publican prays in the temple, prays after his parents. He told God how good, how perfect he was, and how God should be so proud of him. But over here's the public. Pharisee prays with his head up, I imagine, held his in his robe, and tried to look out the eye of his And the Pharisee said, Oh, if you go here, he won't lift his head. He's so ashamed. And with anguish, he goes, Oh, God, you're supposed to be fine. This is where we're resting. That's the only thing that we do. The rest of it, shaking our finger in God's our hand. And I'll trick you and say that. Yeah, well, you know me. You do that. When you say, be merciful, be. You're starting with your hey, trust. Jesus said, pray this way. When he said, this Lord, Your will be done on earth. This is my swear, right? Okay. I don't have to do it. Do it. <laughs> Jesus taught us that and then he did it. He prayed in the garden. It's got the past and bless you. Will be done. Your will be done. The Hebrew says, therefore. Talks about all the rest and the day of rest, the Sabbath day. Since this, you are a member of sins, there's no rest. Some. Since those who formerly had not been new, thank God for again. God again said, said a certain day, call me today. This he did when a long time later he spoke to David. Pastor of both today, hear your voice. Do not harden your heart. For if Joshua had given them rest, I would not have spoken later about him. 
Just remember this. There remains then a Sabbath rest for the people of God. For anyone who enters God's rest also rests from their works. Yes. Let us therefore make an effort into that rest. No one will perish by following the example of disobedience. Obedience is rest. Trying so hard to be admirable is not. Trying so hard to be good is not. When you were born again, God puts his life in nature just be God's child. Except this is Here's the message that Jesus proclaimed the day that he began his ministry. He said, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. This is what he's giving. He's giving freedom to captives. That's rest. He's declaring freedom in dungeons. The message of rest and freedom is in place where people are chained. He preaches good news to poor people. He finds their hearts, he heals hearts that are broken. He shouts out the message of God's blessing and God's favor. God has grace for sinners that matter with sin. He overlooks them because the sin bearer of Jesus Christ. Person, he declares God's vengeance against those who exploit his creatures and create that Satan and the enemy. The people that act like him. Shepherds mourners gives beauty for ashes. Joy, like a healing balm for those who are mourning. Those, those who are ragged and weary in the garment of praise. A grief rights to human spirit and addictions put our souls in chains. The constant grind of a life of poverty, making a living, will carry you down in your body, in your spirit, in your mind. But Jesus proclaims in the middle of all these scourges we live with. Uses in our daily struggle. Hope. Yes. God is not turning his head away. Yes. He still looks on his blood. He looks on his promise of salvation. He said, There's a place for you. It's coming to us. Jesus is that strong arm that carries the burden of the creek anger. Angst and fear and doubt. Trust him. What do you trust him? No, don't trust anybody else. Just trust Jesus. It's real. It's not really the rest. I'm fine. Just for your soul. I wish I knew. Don't be worried. Don't ask me this way. Oh. When we start again, our heart and heart is often on the child. Don't ask me to reason out the mysteries of life, how to face the problems with a smile. Go ask the man found the way, hang on the roads, the road back home to stay, and all communications are destroyed. Go ask the child who's walking now, who once was crippled, but somehow. A useless life for me, no joy. Well, that's the one who's burned out mind is being distorted. I think you find that, that question not as important as it is. Don't ask me if he's good or bad. I don't know. You'll laugh. It's wrong. I can't do it. Don't ask me to prove I know that. I'm careful. Don't ask me. My son was so great. She was so proud. Great high, broken high. And it's new. Bless the child who got dead. Love the way to hurt he had. But it's made it off. That's what I want to say. Go ask the one whose fears have fled, whose tree are quiet. So many peace, utter strength. 
Trust the man that he wants, whose life was just a raging war, decided himself to save the king. Don't pretend to be so wise on and on. I am. All, all you feel the burden. Stand on the side. Then we got another song. If you feel that burden, that rest, you may be in the books all night. We'll stand together to close with this last song. One day when heaven's filled with its praises, one day when sin was as like as could be, Jesus came forth to be born of a virgin.
Oh, my God. 